all of our customers are flying all of their Maxes daily around the world. The airplane is safe, and we're very confident in that. I got nightmares in my head. I fear thoughts build up until I can't hear. My mind fills up into a creature, and it haunts me somewhere much deeper. I got nightmares in my head. I fear the thoughts build up until I can't hear. That my mind fills up into a creature, and it haunts me somewhere much deeper. Hello and a warm welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. A 19-page preliminary report has provided shocking confirmation of clumsy practices for AN6 bolts that were meant to attach the door plug to the fuselage that's of the Alaskan Airlines flight member in early January. Well, they simply were not there. They didn't shear off. It's also not the case that they weren't fastened or fastened properly. They simply weren't there. Not one bolt that wasn't there. Not two bolts that weren't there. Not three. Three that weren't simply installed, but four. That's a little like putting on a car wheel and then picking up a passenger or picking up a carload of passengers and then forgetting to put on the bolts of a wheel of your car. Can you see that it is an accident waiting to happen? And that's why in this instance something did happen. Now the question is how many other Boeings are out there with missing bolts, with other problems? Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Take note, I'll be covering this Paramount docu-series is a three-parter from the perspective of what were the, the documentary makers trying to achieve with this thing cyber sleuths so look out for my coverage on that it's actually something I've covered probably one of the only YouTubers to really be covering this where we sort of hold up a mirror to ourselves and say should we be doing this and then later today I'll also be doing a review of the telematics in the Jennifer Dulos case. So look out for that. That'll be sooner than the uh, thing about the docu-series. If you're enjoying this analysis, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button and let's get started. Now, in terms of Boeing, the crazy thing is in my previous analysis, even before this preliminary report came out, if you guys were paying attention, you may have noticed that I was comparing the rushed assembly of these planes to furniture that's delivered that I've tried to put together and afterwards you have a few extra screws lying around. Well, that's exactly what happened here. That's exactly what happened with the Alaskan airline plane, except no one seemed to notice the extraneous bolts. Incidentally, the door plug um, had been removed to begin with in order to repair rivets. When it was fastened, they simply forgot to attach the four bolts. Now, one person speculated that that may have happened when there's a shift change. And you, you ironically enough, had a shift change when in the rust case where when Hannah Gutierrez Reed was loading the, the firearm, they went off to lunch. And that's often when you forget what you were doing. You know, the last thing that was done, there's, there's a little bit of confusion in terms of uh, continuity. And so how do we know for a fact that none of these AN6 bolts were in place? Well, but get this, because they were able to recover the door plug in the backyard of a physics teacher and study it, you know, like evidence in a crime scene. And what they found was, well, are you sure you want to hear this? Because investigators found zero scuffing, right? There's no scoring, there's no defamation, no denting, which you would see if the bolts were in place in place but not tightened but the fact that there was zero scuffing meant the bolts weren't even present to leave scratches in the paint or dents as the door tore off the fuselage which is actually why the door tore off in the first place there was nothing really anchoring them just like the titan submersible this situation of a door plug mounted minus four bolts you know, the fact that it could survive just so many cycles before the other mechanisms were worn down, before those other mechanisms 
broke and finally wind shear did the rest. It's so analogous to the Titan submersible. The fact that this incident was effectively inevitable. Can you see how, in the same way that if you don't put the bolts on the wheel of a car, that wheel has eventually got to come off. It's just a kind of a fact of nature. Eventually, Murphy's Law is going to kick in. And the crazy thing is that when this, in fact, happened, you know, when that door plug was sucked out and it kind of exploded out of the plane, the fact that no one went out with a plane or a whole group or worse is pretty incredible. Blind luck that a deep salvage. I think you're damn lucky to be alive, kiddo. Now, personally, I really don't think we want to be hearing about bombshells in the context of the lack of safety in Boeing craft. What do you guys say? David Sosi, a safety analyst and former FAA safety inspector, told CNN recently this problem with Boeing started long, long before this actual door came out. That's for sure. Now, a statement like that means, you know, if this happened long before, then the problems that are coming out now, is that the beginning and end of them? Or is this just the beginning of a whole host of problems that are, although foreseeable, um, they, they still kind of got to roll out. They still got to take place. They still got to manifest. So she says the likely culprit was being trapped in an assembly line, forward moving, you know, being trapped in that kind of mindset instead of being more focused on a, a repair station psychology. I'm talking about this particular craft where it needed maintenance. Now it's being maintained, but it's being maintained in an assembly line mindset rather than in a repair station psychology which would be more static and more I would say careful and 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 sort of slower paced in terms of inspecting it and sorting everything out in any event this is not the end of the story the preliminary report is just that preliminary a final re report will be released later According to The Guardian, quote, hours before the NTSB, that's the National Transport Safety Board, released its report, the FAA pledged to scrutinize unacceptable quality issues at Boeing and use the full extent of its authority to hold the aircraft maker accountable for its failures. Now, I can't help thinking that the FAA also needs to pull up its own socks in terms of its own standards, its own oversight protocols. Because the relationship between Boeing and the FAA sometimes seems a little too close for comfort, like the hens looking after the fox house. The FAA may need to, as I say, pull up its socks in terms of holding others accountable for safety. And this is because the FAA is, seems to be giving some of the safety aspects back to Boeing. How can I put this in a more succinct way? According to the New York Times... Mike Whitaker, the FAA's top official, told a House panel that the agency would step up its on-the-ground presence monitoring Boeing's aircraft production. He said, going forward, we will have more boots on the ground, closely scrutinizing and monitoring production and manufacturing activities. In addition to limiting Boeing's production increase, the agency has opened an investigation into the plane maker's compliance with safety standards. It also began an audit looking at the company's production of the MAX, which Mr. Whitaker said would take six weeks. He said the agency had deployed about a dozen inspectors at Boeing and around half a dozen at Spirit. Meanwhile, the other headlines like FAA head defends safety of U.S. air travel after close calls. Problems persist at FAA despite $23 billion plus budget. And those sort of headlines, although those are somewhat in the past. And obviously all of this is making passengers nervous. There's, there was a passenger, I think a British passenger, on a flight to India who noticed duct tape on the wings of a Boeing aircraft, took photos of that and wondered what that was all about. And I do want to encourage you, if you're flying, to do the same. Take note of sounds, of irregularities in the structure around you, panels not quite fitting properly, if you see something like that, report it to, your, to the air hostess. Um, make some kind of note of it. Take a photo of it. You know, be an active participant in this whole idea of 
having Boeing being more cognizant of safety. If you're sitting on a craft and you see another airplane across the airstrip and perhaps a wheel looks strange or something sticking out, take a photo. I'm not going to take it further than that. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.